Let's talk about high pressure switches real quick. And I'm going to show you a quick animation in a second. A high pressure switch in a system, if it's HVAC, if it's refrigeration, it's there to protect the system from overpressurizing, and it's always good to install one. Now, I've seen brand new rooftops come, brand new systems come. They land, they get installed, and from the factory, they don't have these switches in them. So I've always gone and recommended, hey, to the customer later on, these did not come with switches in them to protect against a high pressure or a low pressure failure. What I'd like to do is add them in. Are you okay with that? I think that is a legitimate way to, to create some work and some business for yourself because you are providing value and you are protecting the system if they ever got to a high pressure situation. Now, you have to keep in mind that not all high pressure switches work the same. Some are auto reset, some are manual reset, some are encapsulated, the, the type that you just screw right onto the, the Schrader core valve, or some are the, the box style that you screw on to a part of the machine and it's got the cap tube that runs over to a fitting or so. Now, in my experience, those encapsulated ones, what can happen with those is, is because they are attached to the system, if the electrical side becomes uh, overpressurized, it can actually leak down the insulation of the wires, which is, which is kind of weird and a lot of people have revealed this with soap bubbles. Those, I would use them, yes, but I would prefer to use the type that gets mounted sort of remotely and we run a copper cap line over or even better yet a flexible refrigeration hose over to it and then we we mount it on on the one side and we run the hose over it and we connect it the whole purpose of these high pressure switches is to protect the system from over pressurizing and if you're using different refrigerants you have to be cautious for instance, if we go back to 410A versus R22, there's still some R22 stuff out there, 410A stuff still out there. The pressure settings are gonna be different for high pressure. So what you gotta look at is on your gauges or on a PT chart, if you have digital gauges, you can see it on those, you wanna look at the saturated condensing temperature that you wanna cut out at. A common high pressure cutoff set point for a 410A system is around 610 PSIG. Now, if we look at the corresponding saturation temperature on the Danfoss refrigerant slider app, we can see that we have a corresponding temperature of around 150 degrees. So let's check this out for R22 and see how it differs. Now, if we compare this to R22, a common cutout set point for high pressure is around 400 PSIG. Now, you can see that lines up to just over 150 degrees of saturation. Now, it's a good starting point. We have two refrigerants, two pressures, but the saturation is almost the same. So, I would say 150 degrees, matching that to your pressure could be a good starting point to cut out your system for high pressure. If a unit is outfitted with a high pressure switch, it's to protect the system from overpressurizing. So when that pressure begins to rise in the system and hits its set point, those normally closed contacts will open up. When the pressure falls back into its range that the unit functions at normally, those contacts will close again. But you got to remember that some pressure switches require a hard manual reset to get back up and running. Some of them are automatic as well. Happy HVACing.